good morning everyone and welcome to this week's garden update well i've been very busy out here over the last few days clearing out garden beds amending soil sowing seeds and putting a lot of those seedlings in the ground that i showed you a couple of weeks ago so we'll take a look at all of that a little bit later on plus i want to share with you how i make chicory coffee but to start off, finally, I got around to making some chili jam. Let's take a look at the recipe now. I started off by harvesting these AJ chilies. I didn't have enough of the fully ripened yellow ones, so I ended up picking some of the green ones too. Since my limes are ready to harvest, I decided to add one into the recipe as well. Next, grab yourself two cloves of garlic and half an onion. I only had Spanish red, but usually I would just use a brown onion. With these ingredients and the chilies, add them to a blender. I know that we can all tell already that this is going to be pretty spicy and I can't really handle the heat, but I'm happy to say that my husband who loves spicy food um, should enjoy this chili jam. Next, get two cups of caster sugar, half a cup of vinegar, one tablespoon of ground ginger, half a cup of water and the rind and juice of the lime that we picked earlier. Add all of these ingredients into a pan along with the chili mix. Bring it to the boil, then reduce to a simmer for about 30 minutes. And this is the final result. It's set really well. So next, I just grab myself a few sterilized jars and start to fill them up. This jam is very versatile. You can use it in lots of different ways. For example, you can use it as a marinade on meats. Add it into your toasted sandwiches or even keep it nice and simple. Put it on some cheese and crackers. It's time for a taste test. I don't know what I'm doing here. I hope I'm going to be able to talk afterwards. Anyway, um, I've grabbed myself a cheese, bit of cheese and a cracker. And I'm going to put the teeniest amount of this on top. Let's see how I get on. I'll probably take about that much. It doesn't seem like a lot to most people, but that will probably blow my mind. <laughs> okay, here goes nothing. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> I just feel like they're on fire. I'm going to go inside and grab some milk. I have to say, though, it's actually quite tasty. I'm back. I just had the milk and I feel a bit better. You can always make it milder by scraping out the center of the chilies before you add them into the blender or even just using a milder variety that's not as hot. Also, adding that lime juice and zest gives it a really nice tangy flavor. Okay, so let's head around to the back garden and check out the destruction there. This is the current situation over in the raised garden bed area. It's a complete mess. I spent a few hours in here during the week removing all the plants that had finished for the season and you can see here that I have an absolute massive pile that needs to be cut up and put into the compost bins. Beside this pile there's another one full of the rusty old garden beds. I made a start on removing them. You can see here that I took two away. You can kind of roughly see the outlines of where they were. I will be fixing this up now, probably on the weekend, but I have made a start on replacing some of them. I showed you these a couple of weeks ago. They came in a flat pack, costing $20 each, and it only took me about 10 minutes to put each one of these together. Um, so I've got two made, I've only got another eight to go. <laughs> I've already amended the soil in this one and sown some seeds. Actually, it's going to be a whole bed of carrots. I put this old blanket over the soil. I actually completely soaked it in water first before I put it here. I'm hoping that this will keep the soil underneath nice and moist, ensuring that I get some good decent germination on these carrot seeds. This silver beet plant has been in the ground since probably last winter, which is quite a long time. 
I had completely forgotten that I put it into this bed. It was covered by other plants, kind of got swamped in a bit. But as I was clearing it out, I discovered it again. I wanted to leave it in here to show it to you before I remove it. Um, I was just so shocked at how thick <laughs> the stems are. They're absolutely massive. That's probably a smaller one. But look at the size of this. It's almost like the stem or a trunk of a small tree. So big. This chicory plant has pretty much died off now. Over summertime, it was covered in these blue flowers, attracting a lot of insects. Today, I'm harvesting its roots to make chicory coffee, which you can do on this particular variety. I got the hose out to give it a really good wash and I ended up spraying myself. Anyway, I tried to get into every nook and cranny, but it was still a bit grubby. So I ended up using the potato scrubber um, just to get those extra bits out. Once the roots were clean, I cut them up into smaller pieces, which was way harder than it looks because these were pretty tough to break through. I had to really get in there with my knife to chop them up. Next, I roasted them in the oven for about 40 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius. And you can see that they've really browned up now at this stage, ready for grinding. I don't know why exactly, but I always feel so satisfied lifting off this lid and seeing that puff of powder. Now it's ready to add some hot water to it. I ended up making a fresh mug of coffee because that one that you had just seen had a lot of big chunks floating on top. So what I did with this one was I put the roasted chicory root into this tea strainer and it seems to be much better. Although there are some pieces floating around there, it's definitely not as bad as the other one. When I was grinding up the roots, I could definitely get a coffee smell from it but not so much now that I've added some hot water. It smells quite unique. <laughs> I might not have brewed it properly. I just don't feel like it's fair for me to give any kind of review on it when, you know, I'm not really an expert at making it. But I can see um, how you would say it's a little bit similar to coffee. It has that kind of bitter aftertaste. What I might do during the week is see if I can get my hands on some proper chicory coffee made by the professionals. I just have a feeling that I didn't make it particularly very good. Um, we'll see. I, I have faith in it. I just think what I made wasn't the best. Let's head down to the fan garden where I got a lot of work done down there during the week. I ended up clearing out most of the garden beds out here and I got this massive one planted up. The chickens have scratched it up. I did have it looking like a nice neat row, but pretty much what I put in here was a whole section of garlic. Then at the back, there are some cabbage seedlings cauliflower seedlings, more cabbage over there, and then there's a row of spring onions. There really is a lot more to do in here, but I feel like I've accomplished quite a bit since I seen you last Friday. I'm happy with what I've achieved. We have Earth Day coming up later on this month, which is an event to show our support for environmental protection. So I thought in order to celebrate it, what I'm gonna do is each week, I'll share with you one simple idea that will help to restore our planet. Most of us each week buy some of our food in these tin cans, whether it be your baked beans or tomato sauce. What I like to do with these is remove the food label, give it a wash, and then what you can do is just fill it up with foraged materials from around your garden, your neighbor's garden, family and friends. Um, I just use some random things like this here is um, seed heads. There's some paper bark in there too and some old little stems from, I think they're from actually the chicory. 
This makes a wonderful bug hotel for insects around your garden. It just encourages more wildlife. And remember, I know sometimes we don't like spiders hanging around, but they are part of the um, food chain. And having the spiders will bring the larger beneficial animals into your garden, like birds, for example. I have a few here hanging up on this wall. You can see that I used a bit of wire to tie them together. And I even used over here, this is some old hose um, that I had from, I think it was a year or two ago, it had lots of holes in it. So what I just did was cut it up into small pieces and put it into this tin. So it's just a very simple idea. You don't need to go out there and spend a fortune on all the products that are being sold at the moment. You really can make do with what you've got. And I think that's the whole point. Rather than just going and purchasing more stuff, use what we have, recycle, repurpose, and upcycle like I have here. I'm gonna finish off this week over here where I have so much cosmos now flowering. Thanks for watching everyone. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I put out a video every Friday and I have done for the last two and a half years. It's a general garden update, including harvests, successes and fails, lots of garden tips and tricks, plenty to learn and hopefully inspire you to get growing in a sustainable way. See you next week.